Okay, so broadcast video is live with a tidbit staff meeting. Um, okay, so are we folks, doing that again? We are doing that again. We <laughs> we actually do it regularly. We have readers, and we wanted to get rid of some of them. By <laughs> <laughs> We're culling the market. That's right. We want to drive readers away as quickly as possible by letting them see how the sausage is made. Adam so just wants gonna... people to know that, mm. that, that there are more people in Tidbits other than just him. <laughs> <laughs> he writes everything, but we have to show up for these meetings. You're all, you're all page shells from India. <laughs> we are your pseudonyms. <laughs> all right. Um, Okay, so a couple of uh, site update stuff. Um, Glenn, I believe we have the yeah. Twitter handles working for everybody. Yeah, you can, uh, if you want your Twitter handle show next to your byline, you may have that happen. And I got rid of that dotted line under the bylines too, by the way. Oh, good. Thank you. Yeah, it was a little, so it was a little awkward. We had slight formatting issues in the issue, but uh, but yes, in theory now, if your Twitter if your Twitter byline shows up. Um, or is in the in the Tibbetts publishing system, then you will be able to uh, it will display everywhere on articles in the issue and and you will get thousands and thousands of followers, I'm sure, um, and which can be turned in for a cup of coffee, but not in Seattle. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I <have> no. <laughs> coffee in Seattle is more expensive, so thousands of followers doesn't doesn't equate. That is true. Um, okay, Glenn, any other development updates that you want to tell people about? Hold on one second. I'm just... He's <laughs> in a dark mood. All this machinery. Wait a second. There we go. He's in a fog. <laughs> that was important. Oh, that's it's... working great. Hold on. He's trying to get himself there. <laughs> there we go. Okay, right now. Right oh, now we can't see up your nose like we could before. <laughs> The scary thing was that's the best you're gonna get from me. Wait. The scary thing is that wasn't a Google uh, <laughs> hangout thing. <laughs> he actually wears that normally. Well, I, it's my CPAP. I get to. Uh, <laughs> there we go. All right, now you get now. That's better. Can you see me now? Yeah. Meanwhile, Mr. Glenn, who said, "Let's <sighs> get on with the meeting." Yeah, now I can't see anybody else. That's the best part. <laughs> Okay, okay, so anyhow, the, um, the other thing is we're working on the uh, uh, mailing list stuff. We have this issue, which is the way our mailing list software works, is Adam has to keep a browser open when he uh, uses the software, and um, we are switching to an approach where it's just going to queue everything and then send it separately, so it should make it more reliable to send email and have fewer problems. The, the browser open turned out not to be a problem because it had been a problem initially, um, but then um, in a in a fit of inspired hackery, Glenn increased the timeout to something like three hours. Um, so even though That's my browser occasionally site, yeah. would would close or crash or I'd restart my machine or something without realizing, um, the system didn't know for three hours that that had happened. Um, but it wasn't a great system. And the other problem was if we did need to restart the machine for any reason, then sending would be interrupted. And although we could we had a way of restarting the sending. Um, at the place where it left off, it was uh, a royal pain. So it's nice to have you know, nice to have that fixed. And so we'll be testing that um, this week. So hopefully we will have better, better and more powerful sending. Um, yeah. Let's see. We're, we're working on a lot of little things. I can't remember anything else that um, arises the level of anyone else's interest. Yeah. Let's see. I'm just sort of looking. Um, oh, uh, just. Uh, Consistency sake, um, we've we've decided to call our mailing our mailing software Mailbot um, uh, along the Podbot line. So uh, so now we actually know what to call it as opposed to like the mailing thing, which was getting a little awkward. And so into a Walmart near you. <laughs> uh, we're trying to get the podcast feed to update and take new graphics and a new description. Um, working with getting Apple's, getting iTunes to uh, to do that has been a royal pain, and we haven't really figured it out yet. Um, Did we figure out that you need to? Will you have to submit a new URL to them? Is that the deal? No, I don't think so. I mean, that's no one has said you need to submit a, an entirely, new, and I think that would actually be dangerous because then we might oh, be wait. dropped entirely. It's well, more it's still that not, yeah, it's still not updating though. I've, I mean, we've. Did you I've rename the graphic? I did not rename the graphic, but the description is still not updated. Yeah, the graphic has to be renamed. They're clear about that. Oh, okay. Well, that well, hmm. It should have been renamed because 
See, the, uh, the confusing thing there is that the graphic isn't, um, it wasn't referenced before. So it's not, Jeff didn't give us, a, I think it's got a different name already. Well, anyway, we'll figure that out. Yeah. So, okay. Um, so, yeah, and then there's just some, some, uh, some little stuff. Um, okay. Oh, I also uh, solved the, uh, well, it's a minor thing, the CSS, Amazon S3 thing. You don't need to care about it. It's all solved. <laughs> Content type issue. All. Okay. Um, so, next question. I had, I, there, was, there was some discussion of this in Trello, which I have not seen yet. Um, I need to quit and I need, to, I need to rejoin. I'm not getting the video thing working. One sec. He just can't get the little halo working. That's his problem. Yeah. He wants a halo. Um, so uh, got to earn the halo. <laughs> got to earn the halo. <laughs> he's just not nice enough. That's the problem. Okay, he's quick, playing the old version of halo. Gone. Yeah, really. So what do you want to say? No one else will hear this. So wait, we should sign him up to write about Coda while he's not here. I think that's a great idea. <laughs> Everyone agreed. <laughs> he he he's doing the most web stuff of, of all of us. Okay. I I, yep. Okay. So I agree. Okay, everyone agrees. So Glenn's going to write about Coda, and when he comes but, but back, we need a degree of difficulty. He's got to write it as a series of Twitter feeds. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. He'll he'll do that easily. <laughs> <laughs> that is we, true. I yes, can't I can't edit a forty thousand word article. I just can't. <laughs> why is this version of Coda better than the last version of Coda, where I couldn't even figure out like why do I want to use this program? Because it's two point it. It, it has a two on it. <laughs> what I found interesting is I went to the I went to the main Coda website, the top page, and it, you really have to look to find out what Coda is. Yeah. <laughs> it's a floor wax. <laughs> is it a dessert topping? I th oh. Oh, okay. Glenn seems to think he's been knocked off. So let me see if I can reinvite him. He's Don't not been knocked that. off. He, he knocked himself him. off. Okay, sorry. He's there rejoined. He's hey, <coughs> congratulations, Glenn. Maybe taller this time. Yeah, you don't know. It's it's great that you you've been you're being so helpful. Um, <laughs> Thanks so for volunteering. So so you have a Coda two review um, that you can write entirely in Twitter, <laughs> and Jeff's going to edit. <laughs> <laughs> for someone who is complaining about doing a video hangout. <laughs> See, uh, do we have to go to my point? He's awfully unfocused. I'm proving my point, I think. Oh, God, not this again. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so in any event, um, Joe, did you write about Coda before? That's what I, I thought. Coda, the very first, the very, the first released, uh, the first release ever I wrote about it, and um, I, I wasn't especially um, happy with it. And no one else in the world apparently agreed with my criticism, so... Except for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's a good sign. Well, Matt and I always agree. Um, you were one of those people who thought the Internet wasn't going to go anywhere, right, Matt? It still hasn't. <laughs> right. Yeah, I was going to say, is it going to go anywhere? <laughs> <laughs> but I do like, I mean, from, from what I've seen of the, of the video of the new version, it does look very attractive. So and the we'll, try, we'll try it on a day or two. And I, I think the, the, the uh, what are they calling it, air preview feature is rather nifty. So you can just yeah. set up your iPad I next to you and preview. I, okay. what is, Coda, is Coda a development environment? I've never used it, actually. I've forgotten what it does. You've never used it, and you're going to review it? That's not very <laughs> smart, is it? Well, okay. he'll be unbiased. My review is TK, 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 Jeff, please fill in. So, <laughs> well, you just got... Since you uh, bailed on the on the video, you uh, just got um, nominated for it. I so. bailed on the video in order to make my settings work. That's exactly. <laughs> it. uh, it's the it, it, it's the Twitter ver Twitter and Storify uh, review that you're going to be writing, Glenn. You, you can go. get everyone else in the Twitterverse to write it for you. Oh, hey, what does everyone think about? <laughs> <laughs> no, Glenn can just say I wrote the whole thing, but then I did use the code folding feature, so. If it's I, one we'll have the headline. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm with you. Well, well, Glenn, to, to answer your question, I, I think Coda is sort of what we all hoped that you know uh, Page Mill and Dreamweaver would be. I mean, it's a it's a web programming environment that Ford has some okay. smarts to it, which all apparently right. has added MySQL, um, uh, MySQL stuff. Yes. Um, I don't quite, I can't quite visualize that, but. 
you know, who knows? Maybe it's, you know, huh. maybe it's all live now. I mean, that's, I mean, the big problem I've had with all of these kinds of things is that when you have a template-driven site like we do, you're not really writing HTML, you're writing something else. And, well, um, and also, exactly. people have ways of, I mean, my problem is I've got a way of making web pages, and I've got a way of FTPing them, and I just, like, couldn't figure out what Coda was giving me that I didn't have a better way of solving. Integrated environment, I guess. I mean, that's I've been looking for that. Go live. That was Go Live's advantages. It had a lot of weaknesses, but it's integrated environment, and you can actually teach someone to use it in a matter of you know hours, not years. <laughs> like Dreamweaver. Well, I would love to see a program that makes it easy for the ordinary person on the street to make their own web pages because I that. think that's I think that's still <laughs> an unsolved not. problem. Yeah. This is Mac Rabbit. The Mac Rabbit people were trying to do that with what was it, espresso and espresso, it was baffling. <coughs> and Corellia's uh, Corellia's Sandvox is the other thing along I those lines. Out, yeah. Yeah. Now, what I was sort of looking for in in Coda, and I didn't see any mention of. I didn't look very closely. Um, that I've been kind of turning the screws on the Corellia people about as well is that EPUB is really just a website. You know, it's HTML and CSS wrapped up in a in a, in a MIME wrapper, uh, zipped MIME wrapper, and um, and so. One of these things could pretty easily do uh, could become an EPUB generation tool. You know, it's the same kinds of tools, and uh, and yet no one quite seems to have caught on to that yet. BB Edit. Well, well yes. BB Edit lets you kind of go in and you know file by file manipulate things, but it doesn't really provide a full EPUB environment. Yeah, so and and so get this in, in BB Edit. You, I mean, this is wonderful. Don't get me wrong. You can drop an EPUB on BB Edit, and it will open it in a you know in a, a browser, and you can you know click on any of the files inside and edit them and all that. But if you want to save changes, you have to hit Command S. You cannot save in any other way or navigate away because if you do that, it says, oh, do you want to have some save changes? And when you try to save then, it forces you to save outside the EPUBs, um, which is just weird. You know, it's one of those things where you have to be careful what you're doing because command S does not work the same as uh, saving in other ways. Yeah, it's yeah. sort of hacked up yeah. because you're working inside of an existing zip file, and so yeah. save kind of gets funky. <laughs> Funky. So I guess the next question is, do we know of anyone that might be a good person to write it, since none of us are seem really uh, enthusiastic? I mean, <laughs> it, it, it seems cool, but, um, you know. Well, we do, Maybe we do see all the people who are watching our... Oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> isn't it telling us that any... Uh, we, we have two viewers, I wonder... We do? I oh, you can see because you're the owner? Yeah, I can see as oh. two viewers. I don't know who they are, though. Hi, viewers. Hi, Mom. <laughs> so tell us yeah. who you are. Send us a postcard. Address oh, it. Here, I'll, I'll watch from another window. Box 350, Boston, Mass 021. Oh, we lost four. one of them. One viewer's gone. They got oh, embarrassed because we talked to them. Send it to Zoom. So, yeah. so the, the person who um, we could probably assign this to if we wished is Steve McCabe. Mm -hmm. um, as you may have noticed, he's been writing more and more, and um, he's getting better. Uh, he, he's he's. Uh, what do you say? He, he has. Come on, uh, I like this part. Let's <laughs> criticize our authors in public. This is great. No, no, no. See, <laughs> he's very clear about how he wants to. He wants to do more writing, and he's you know he's, he's 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 looking. <laughs> he's watching. He's watching. Uh, so, uh, so in any event, but but uh, and, and so uh, so Steve uh, is, is sort of happy to do you know to be to be given things to to do because of that because he wants basically wants the practice. Um, and uh, problem and solved. Stick it in Trello. On to the next thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a little disconcerting to write a short review or even a medium-sized review of something that's designed to do as many things as Coda seems to be able to do. That looks yeah. to be like a rather extensive piece of software. That's why none of mm -hmm. us is volunteering. It looks like a big sinkhole well, for someone time. Someone can just write, write a criticism of its poor, uh, you know, uh, photo editing capabilities. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's MIDI implementations sucks. <laughs> um, <laughs> MIDI Claridians? <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's basically, it down, no. More powerful. Yeah, no. I mean, hardly any spreadsheet functions. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> doesn't do math to save its life. Yeah. So you need more Google. And and how can it do you know MySQL but not uh, you know not uh, not OpenBase and Panorama? I mean, come on. Right. right. 
So, okay, other content stuff. Um, let's see. Theoretically, I really, really am going to do the, this article about how Soho Organizer can sync iCloud contacts to Snow Leopard. Please, because um, if you don't, then how am I going to refer to your article in the next version of my book? <laughs> Well, and, and there's also that level of I'm hitting enough software that's lion only now that it's starting to be awkward to be uh, running Snow Leopard on my main Mac. I'm glad to hear I'm not the only one who's living mostly in, in Snow Leopard, although I am, I am on Lion right now because I wanted to see whether it would work. But you're so far ahead of all of our Tiger users. Most, most Tibbets readers use Tiger. <laughs> is, is anybody on this call actually using Lion but having Snow Leopard in VirtualBox? Because I've seen people talk about that from time to time. Oh. I'm curious how that works. We were going to do an article about that. Joe, there was that guy. There, there, there was, was that, that guy? guy. I remember that guy. We'll have uh, to find him. Trello. Yeah, yeah, there was a, there was yeah. a guy. He's stuck in the virtual uh, box. I have to look him up. I forget who it was. I'm sure I can I find him. It. I'll put it I in think trouble. His name was Zaphod. So <laughs> I'm going to actually here take screen share. I, I don't I don't go backward in uh, in virtual machines. I only go forward. <laughs> mm. Okay. Well, so I am going to take over the video for a second here because I think I can do that and show Trello, um, which is very cool. So I am uh, in VirtualBox. So well, I have Trello open in one window, this window open in another, and I'm seeing a change in both places. This is kind of awesome. Uh, to virtualize Snow Leopard. This is the most exciting video I've ever seen. Find the guy who is going to write it. Um, I'm going to find the guy. Um, <laughs> you know a guy? We, we got a guy. He so might be the guy who's watching the hangout. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So, Lex and Marco's Let's Sing app. Go ahead and should write about that. Yeah, I want to write about that. I was going to say, um, well, that's hard. Honestly, that's really honestly, the, the idea yeah. of the app makes me want to run screaming in the opposite <laughs> direction. Um, so that's weird, you, but you bought a television recently. Doesn't that mean you're going mainstream? <laughs> I hate singing. <laughs> we yeah, were talking about this beforehand. I don't, get, I don't get earworms. I don't, I don't really... I like listening to music, but it doesn't do anything. I don't, I don't want to sing it. I don't want to... I don't get it stuck in my head, man. None of that kind of stuff. So... so I'll, I'm going to assign the um, Adam is an edge case article, and we'll write about... You can assign it all you want. <laughs> no, you, and I have, you have this ongoing argument, which... Or not argument, it's the... Uh, I'll tell you if it's an argument or not. This isn't an argument. Um, no, we have the ongoing issue is that as, as all of, because all of us are weirdos, none of us represent mainstream culture, we have to be sure to not uh, make assumptions from our own behavior, like using RSS. Um, <laughs> no, the, I think sing so I think the let's sing is is charming because it taps into something that's obviously a mass phenomenon. I actually like the app too because I like singing and I like hearing other people's voices. It's why I like you know, doing audio chat. Not really <laughs> to see anybody. It, it, it's sort of like the first round of American Idol meets Name That Tune. No, it's, <laughs> it's people you know and like, and you get to hear them. <clears throat> Very adorable. Do you like doing karaoke, too? No, no, no. This isn't karaoke. That's in front of people you don't know, largely. Usually karaoke is done in bars. And, and, it's, and it's better to do it in front of people you do know? Like, but it's in private. Because we all have too many friends. No, but, that's the, but the point of karaoke is supposed to be, no, nah, nobody knows you anyway. They're, you know. <laughs> As I said, I, you know, I, Just, I, I have one word for you. Glee. The popularity <laughs> of Glee shows that... Sing a sauce, or let's what, sing. Only glee out. is glee is is a four-letter word um, it, it, meaning it, it, meaning it, it, enjoyment and fun. It's yeah, a TV show, Adam. Adam. <laughs> it's, 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 it's <laughs> yeah, House is also the place you live, not an eight-season best. Uh, <laughs> no, I know about House. Actually, that's over now. <laughs> because Hugh, because right. Hugh, Hugh Laurie is brilliant. So, except I can't watch that show. All right, <laughs> anyway, I'll write something. I just wanted to suggest I want to write something about it, just because it's you know sort of friend of tidbits, and I'll write you know our good friend. Our good friends and former contrib for, you know former contributor Lex Friedman and Narco Tabini has written this app, and if you like this sort of thing, great. And if you're Adam Angst, run away. <laughs> and uh, and I will and I will make comments in the comments. I'm like you people are mad, mad I say. Yes, because one person commenting incessantly is the is 
<laughs> is the sane one. Uh huh. <laughs> Mad, I say. Okay. Our own um, publisher has become our own troll. So <laughs> it's not a, not a troll. It's its own <laughs> website. <laughs> So the wrangling PDFs in modern web browsers, um, I, Steve McCabe has actually gone and written that for me. Um, he just turned it in, although we, we need to, uh, I need to we were sort of try and figure something out because um, he's cl claimed um, and, and has documentation in theory on the internet saying that Firefox 12 does not work with the, um, uh, does not work with uh, the Adobe PDF plugin. Um, but on the other hand, it does seem to work with the PDF plugin for me. But Firefox 12, wasn't that from like weeks ago? I mean, <laughs> that's, that's so archaic. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're up to like 84 now, aren't we? <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. I, you know, the problem is, is I'm not sure how long we get to mock them before the joke isn't actually even funny anymore. Uh, it's just... It's ridiculous. I did. I it's did called a running gag. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I keep calculating. I think they're up to about 4.8. I mean, in real world terms, they're, that's what they are. They're not really at Firefox 5 yet. They haven't yet had enough major features to warrant a 5.0 update. Um, but uh, the um, yeah, it's it's a. Uh, it's, it's, it's a problem. But uh, I did see something, and this admittedly came from a, an unbiased or a biased source, but uh, apparently Chrome, uh, in, by some, some stats, has become the most popular browser. I saw that. I was surprised. It doesn't matter if it's the most popular or like close to. I was surprised it was anywhere near it. That was, I, I didn't know idea IE had fallen so fast. Could someone explain to me why browsers compete? I mean, since a browser is free, oh, I've, uh, I've never... You, you understand that this question goes back 20 years. I mean, I really don't understand no, that. Well, there are two things. The, the, there's a different argument for why this happened in the 90s. Right now, it's, um, it's search results. Firefox makes, like, hundreds of millions of dollars a year from ads that are um, Google ads that appear through the Firefox browser. So if you do a search and you're in Firefox, Google pays Firefox a percentage of the ad revenue from that. And the same thing with Safari. Safari, uh, Apple makes tens of millions of dollars a year from uh, Google. Let's write a browser. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I think, I mean Mozilla is open source. Can't we just take it and make the Tidbits browser? Yeah, you can. Hey. <laughs> we could. Yeah, you cut a deal. They compete. I mean, part, it used to be you competed for lock-in. You were competing, you know, IE needed to lock people into Windows and make it impossible for them to switch. And that was the argument way back when. Like, Netscape could allow you, know, you to work on any platform, and IE meant, you know, ActiveX and all that crap. And now it's just pure money. It's like Apple... Apple has a, you know, could make a lot more free money by making, you know, if twice as many people use Safari, it would be good for them just from the ad revenue standpoint. Do you realize that if anyone ever figures out that ads don't work, our entire economy will collapse? Shh! Quiet! This is live! That's right. <laughs> There's one person watching. <laughs> We're up to three. Okay. And that person's economy just <laughs> collapsed. <laughs> there, there goes Greece. Yeah, I don't know. I, n I never click on ads, and I don't know anybody who does, so I'm not. I, sure I don't even see call. them. <laughs> I've got them all blocked. Yeah. I don't yeah, know. and you complain about me being the outlier. I so that means it. that you you were influenced by that ad for that ad blocker. <laughs> you you must have. <gasps> That's for Jason Snell. He's Stop. Blocked. That. <laughs> awesome. All right. Uh, okay. Well. Um, that Jason guy. So so yeah. So the, so the Wrangling PDFs uh, in modern web browsers is is en route. We will figure out why uh, the Adobe plugin seems to work for me and whatever Firefox version is current, but no one else. Um, other stuff. Um, Jeff, are you working on the iStop Motion? Uh, no, no, why no. should I do that? Just because it's in progress. <laughs> it's um, not in progress. Oh, no, that's, sorry, that's an idea. What's your, you have a, you have a bunch that's of stuff in progress. Yeah, yeah I, st I strangely do. Actually, wait, I should probably move the Wally Connect back, too, because I haven't actually done anything with that. Um, I, I've written half of the, the review of the Hammerhead uh, Capo, Capo uh, I, iPad case, um, and then uh, I realized that, uh, tomorrow, Photosmith 2.0 is coming out, um, which is sort of what I hang a giant section of my, my iPad for Photographer's book on. Um, it's software that lets you uh, take photos that you have brought into the iPad, and you can uh, rate and tag and keyword 
I guess tag and keyword are the same thing. Um, basically, do a, a lot of metadata processing on on your photos on the iPad, so that then you can then just dump that into uh, Lightroom. So. Um, so wait a second. With I mean, yeah. this is this has been this has been my my complete and utter confusion surrounding um, the iPhoto app, which is that if it doesn't let me if it doesn't let me see what I or if it doesn't let me connect to my iPhoto library, it's really kind of pointless. Oh um, yeah, yeah. So, it, so does this it, let you connect to your Lightroom uh, library, whatever they call it? It does, yeah, yeah, and and what it, it can do is basically, I mean, the, the the need that it serves is that you can, um, you know, all right, let's say you go away for a three-day weekend and you don't want to bring your laptop with you because it's big and bulky, but you have your iPad. So you, you take a bunch of photos, you import them into the iPad, and then while you're doing something else, maybe you're flying or, you know, someone else is driving or you just, you know, have some free time somewhere, you can start going through your photos and weed out the ones that you like and the ones that you don't like and, you know, add um, tags and titles and just like that, that sure. sort of... The organization stuff. work, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you, you do that on the iPad, so then when you get back to your computer, you just sync it to Lightroom, and all that information goes into Lightroom so that that's already done, and then you can do, like, more editing or, or you know, whatever on your computer. So Does it sync only to Lightroom, or are there other... Uh syncs only to Lightroom right now, oh, yeah. Okay. So, but Lightroom is sort of the big dog, so... That's why. Are you saying that Lightroom has beaten out Aperture in the professional photographer market? By <laughs> giant <laughs> leaps and bounds. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and why is that? Um, I think because they were they were there first, um, and uh, I think. And Aperture also doesn't run on Windows. Aperture doesn't run on Windows, and um, I don't know. It, Aperture is cool, but it's always been dog slow for me. I I started out using Aperture. I thought it was great, and then something in you know, even the last major version, uh, it was really slow. And I, and that was about the time that I bought a brand new MacBook Pro, and I thought, oh, it's because I have an old machine with an old graphics card. And no, it's 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 just kind of a dog. So I think you know, uh, photographers for the most part. Have just have gone with Lightroom. Does Lightroom have really, really good keywords, like hierarchical keywords and things? Yeah, like that? yeah. Does it have really, really good export? Actually, wait. Uh, I, I I don't know if they're hierarchical, but but it has like easy tagging and um, uh, yeah, good export. Um, really good photo um, editing uh, features, especially if you're shooting in RAW. So. See, here's my problem. I'm still stuck in expression media, which oh, is no. what, what did it used to be called? Um, I view I view multimedia. That's right. I'm still basically I'm still back in I view multimedia pro because of the hierarchical keywords, and I've got this entire yeah. workflow designed around that, and I can't get out. Yeah, that's been my favorite shoebox photo shoebox app ever, and then Microsoft bought it. I mean, it was never great, but it did get what you wanted more than anything else, and then Microsoft bought it, and it just went into a morass of all. And now somebody else bought it. That was a couple well, years ago. For, oh yeah, from Microsoft, and I'm still using it. I haven't upgraded it in ages and ages uh, because, like, I looked at the list of things it was going to do if I upgraded, and I'm like, no, this sounds absolutely terrible. I'm staying away. So, but I'm completely stuck in it. It's Apple scriptable. It has wonderful export. It has these wonderful hierarchical keywords. The interface is mm -hmm. absolutely terrible, and yeah. uh, but I'm stuck in it anyway. No, it's the best. It's the best worst program because every nothing else. Everything else sort of wants to. Um I could write an article someday about why I'm stuck in expression media if you want to. Well, it, it, isn't it dead? I mean, didn't Microsoft kill no, it? No, because no, somebody it. bought it. And, they're keep, and they've upgraded somebody it. Else it. Yeah. Somebody yeah. else bought it from Microsoft? Yeah. You've got, yeah. uh, you got to rewind to the live ago. broadcast. Is it on one? No, it isn't on one. It's... Um, Okay. Yeah, You're I didn't. Very close. You're very yeah. close. Pro. I mean, I know. I. 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 I hmm, okay. Yeah, I. I, I knew it had been. Microsoft had that whole thing that gave Jeff uh, some money, which was the whole Expression Studio thing that never totally came about. Gave me like a tiny, tiny bit of of, of money because uh, David Blatt and I were going to write a book, and and we got a, a fraction of an advance, and then it it like, completely changed and. Yep. Everything. It's now called Phase One Media Pro, and right. I get emails from Phase them constantly. One, right. You can see they've yeah. made a big impression on me. There's a Wikipedia article about it. 
<laughs> what? There's a Wikipedia article? It must Phase be right one then. Media Pro is a w- Wikipedia entry. Is there a Wikipedia article about us? Yes. I'm feeling very, um, I'm feeling very, wait, okay. <laughs> it's, I know, I'm not showing my books. It's making me feel bad. Everyone else has their books showing except Jeff. There we go. Okay, now I'm showing some oh, those, those are my CDs. Oh. Yeah, and those, that's just wallpaper <coughs> behind me. Better? Those aren't actually books. Shameless, shameless. <laughs> Isn't there a book screen share of a Google effect for books behind you? Make us look learned. I think it should be a Google effect called Masterpiece Theater, where you're actually in a leather armchair with books behind you and like a brandy snifter on the table next to you. So, um, so Jeff, uh, speaking of Lightroom, um, which we were momentarily ago, um, yeah. any, any word from Nolan Hester? Um, yes, apparently he has unpacked all of his boxes now. <laughs> 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 he just moved to a new house. Oh. Um, yeah, uh, actually, uh, he's like a block away from Herkimer. Oh, well, good for him. He was yeah. in West Seattle, which is, uh, which is hell and gone. We don't know anybody who lives what? in West Seattle. We don't know anyone who lives hey, there. Nobody hey, West lives. Seattle has a fifth of the you know Seattle population, and it's 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 grown up a lot. It's yeah, a but fifth they're of, all a fifth of what a fifth of uh, whiskey uh, <laughs> of the of the entire Seattle population. Oh, you know, we don't we don't get our due. <laughs> yeah, but you need don't you, you have to like, present don't papers to. to get there or something like that? Mm, like go through Chuck Island. It's an island cut off from the main. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I need to, to, to loop back in with him um, and see, I mean, we had that, that email back and forth that was like, you know, hey, <laughs> yeah, he's still alive, <laughs> available, <laughs> yeah, um, and, and any, any news from uh, Lisa Schmeiser on Pinterest? No, um, actually, she, she never ended up calling uh, when she was like, she's like, I have some questions for you, and... So I was like, yeah, sure, call me on this day, and nothing. And uh, based on Twitter, it sounds like they're, they're selling their house, I think. Traveling somewhere in Boston right now. Well, they, so. well, or they're selling their house, too. And they're selling their house. Hmm. So, you know, like that. It's okay. like life or something. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, let's see. Michael, you are probably not working on anything particular while we finish the iBooks author book. Is that correct? Um, well, we're finishing. Are we finishing? Yeah, we're you're, finishing. you're almost done, I know. Uh, you, you have to uh, take a, a look at the uh, multi-touch derivative of it. Yes, yes, that's on my, on my page and, this uh, afternoon. And I believe Tanya is currently uh, wrestling with uh, the text factories to make it look bright and shiny. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we're, we're, we're in the closing stages there. Right. Okay, and then oh, that was you were going to write about the um, push and IMAP idle once you got some right. time. Yeah, okay. it, it's not going to be a huge article, but I think it's something that needs to be you know, just kind of described. Oh, I, think I think that's a, a good little article. So, yeah. and then Matt, what was your thing? Is that in Trello? Yeah, there's, well, there's two things. One oh. of them is in Trello. Um, well, right, the iTunes match problems that you're still having. And, um, and I, I, I just wanted to write like a follow-up, you know, because I wrote that article where I tried iTunes mm-hmm. Match, and I actually kind of enjoyed it, but it's got, you have to work your way around the fact that, like, it wants to suck up your entire library, so what are you going to do about that? Well, you have to make a second library. So I wrote about that, Yeah. and I did things in a very complicated, defensive way, um, and, but now I've gotten much better and smoother, and I trust it much more, and I know how it's going to behave. So I wanted to write like a little follow-up article saying, well, I am still using it, and it's easier than I thought, and I'm still enjoying it, and it does still have these problems. But I also had these ghost songs that I, that I couldn't get rid of, and in the end, I had to, um, uh, to restore the, my device. And it turns out that restoring your device is really easy, and the device runs faster afterwards. So that was actually the big lesson that I wanted to write about, was like, restoring your device is not really a big problem. It's good. I deleted those songs you suggested, or I sent them to um, to uh, audiobooks, and I still can't get the last 30 items to iTunes match sync on my one machine. It's been six months. <coughs> oh, no luck. What was the problem? I've already forgotten. Oh, it's just it's just a, <laughs> I had 10,000 items and 7,000 matched, and the ones that did it uploaded some of them and more and more. And every time I restarted the machine, it would upload more. I quit iTunes. I have to force quit it. It won't stop. Automatically, and now it's down to like 25 items that it's trying that just has the progress bar, and it's had the progress bar for six months through. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. 
And so I set them to audiobooks. I, sh I could just delete them, but uh, there's still something wrong there. It's, it's a BPM feature, bits per month. Yeah. <laughs> So okay, and then you, and then Matt, you'd also we're potentially going to do something about small about how um, you, how you figured out Lion's resume feature. I don't is, like this small broken. thing, you know. I it, it, no, I, I, mean, say, you, I say I say that to I make wrote you feel a freaking, better. You, you, you wrote it to me, you said it to make me feel bad. I, no. I, I, I wrote a freaking take control book about Lion, you know, <laughs> and I'm I, like. I couldn't figure out like what is this restore Windows thing doing? Sometimes it like the Windows would come back from the dead like zombies, and sometimes they wouldn't. And I've been trying to figure it out ever since then. And like yesterday, I had this revelation where I meant went, oh my gosh, this is why it's ignoring my settings on this. And like I figured this out, this great thing that nobody else knows. It's like a scoop. You know, we're going to bring in all these people. We're going to get what's it, what's it called when you get all those people and you can't fireball? Yeah, we're going to get fireballed or whatever. And then you're saying, "Oh, you just write a small article." Well, thanks I'm a lot, me dude. merely saying that it's not that much text, so you can write it right away. <laughs> big news doesn't mean lengthy news; it just means big. <laughs> So no, I think it's I, I I was actually really happy when I read your your description of that because it's been driving me nuts. The same thing. It's like why is this stuff always why is it always bringing? Because for me it's preview. Like I cannot get preview to stop opening crud. Um, <laughs> it, that, that it's always there's always stuff coming coming up in preview whenever I launch preview on my on my Lion Mac and and it's because it's not you know it's it's always trying to open those documents because of how I've quit it or not quit it as the case well, may be. Well, that's right. And it turns out that there's three things you have to do to to, to turn this thing off. Um, one is when you restart, make sure that little checkbox that says am I going to you know remember all the windows is unchecked. Otherwise, all the apps that you had yeah. running are going to come back. The other one is, in general preferences, you got to uncheck that box that says reopen the windows for everything. Right. But the third thing is, you got to quit preview first and then restart the machine. And that's the dis discovery that I made. If you just restart, it doesn't go through the normal quit procedure. It's got this special thing called fast termination. And as far as I can tell, this is just a bug in fast termination. It simply avoids this preference. When you do fast termination, it memorizes the windows and brings them back from the dead, regardless of your other settings. Well, the other problem is if you have, a pro if you have an issue where, uh, I've seen this repeatedly, you have uh, apps that have stalled while you're trying to do a restart in Lion, and I have resume checked, so I actually want it to do that. And uh, if I force quit an app, or I manually quit an app during that and there's a stall. When it restarts, it doesn't start the right apps. It doesn't start the ones that were forced quit uh, mm -hmm. or that it had a force quit. So there's like another little variable there as well. Well, you can write that article. No. <laughs> The whole thing's a mess. So, oh. so what are you saying? So basically, what you're saying, Matt, now is if we wanted to to act the way we want to act, we have to quit everything manually every time. Yep. Yeah, I think that's that right. Sucks. Actually. <laughs> yeah, although I thought 1074, Matt, you've of course tried this with 1074, right? I thought it fixed some related bugs. Was not really. All 1074 fixed was that little checkbox when you restart. Oh. The, the, oh, and another problem is there are situations where you restart the computer and the dialog never appears. So now you don't yeah. know like. What's it going to do? But yeah, no. It, the only thing it did was you could like uncheck that checkbox on the restart dialog, but then the next time you came around, I mean, it would be checked again. It wasn't remembering what you did the last time. Ten seven four fixed that. Now it remembers. I told, but you know, most people are running Safari, Mail, and um, you know, a game, so they don't care. So we're we're you know. We're sophisticated users. Are you saying we're outliers yet again, Glenn? Outliers. That's where Tidbit's new name is. Outliers. All our all our readers use Tiger, and we don't watch television. <laughs> all right. Um, Wasn't that a couple of film outliers? <laughs> it's my favorite sliders and outliers. <laughs> Any other yeah, content? Any other content ideas? I've been using ScreenFlow a hell of a lot lately because I'm making um, a whole bunch of little videos for. Um, Script debugger. You know, I'm the I'm the author of the the documentation yeah. for Script debugger. And Mark Aldrich, we're about to come out with Script debugger five, and Mark Aldrich is too busy to to make the videos, so I've been making them. So I've got a lot of experience with ScreenFlow, and that might become an article in the future. That would be great. I love ScreenFlow. I don't use it enough, but I, every time I use it, I just love. There's a couple things that I don't understand how to do right in it, but um, but I well, just think it's fantastic. 
<laughs> well, see, the thing is, there's like a couple of things. Those those couple of things that may be that there's like no good way to do them. Oh, it's, a very strange, it's a very strange program. I mean, on yeah. the one hand, it's miles, it's far and away the best we've got for doing this kind of thing. And on the other hand, it's got these huge functionality holes and these these very very odd behaviors that are, I think, are gi like gigantic bugs, and they don't yeah. think so. Oh, that's interesting. So it's well, they charge a lot for it too. They should listen to feedback because they charge a lot for it. But it's it's great. Great. That's how I made that airport walkthrough. It's like I could do something in like twenty. I could make a five-minute thing in like twenty-five minutes because it's so good at what it does. And we could be using more of those things in tidbits. You know, we're supporting we're supporting our articles by um, you know much more by photos than we used to. And we could support them also by like little movies. And I'm much much better at making those things than I used to. Be. We tried doing that. Um, oh gosh, what two years ago? Three years ago? Remember, Jeff? Um, we had we did a number. I of remember we talked tasks. about it. Did we actually? We actually no. We did a number of them, and and okay. we just never heard anything back. I mean, it was one well, of those. We, we kind of I fell did on one. Remember, remember um, there was one where you had to make some funny gesture in order to drag and drop in leopard or snow leopard or something. I made one for that. That's yeah. the last time I've done one. Well, I've had uh, that YouTube walkthrough. I've had five thousand views of the uh, AirTube. I'm sorry, the YouTube uh, uh, Airport Utility 6.0 walkthrough. I had five thousand views. It was promoted in <coughs> other places, but I expect um, the article pushed some of those because the article got. Like Interesting. Well, we could. I mean, we certainly can try more. I mean, cool. I think. I mean, I like the idea of them a lot. It was more just that they. You know, I mean, it's still a heck of a lot harder than taking screenshots. So. It's true. Although, if you do it, I mean, it's sort of like when I did the airport one. I mean, I think there's a, there is a ratio, but I did like I don't know, like a five minute walkthrough. And as I said, I think it took me an hour total. Like I recorded it a couple times, messed with it, but it, the ratio was pretty decent. And it's the issue if we do. Uh, I think there's that steamroller effect. If we do a lot of them, then people start expecting us to do them, and then they watch more. You set up a Tidbits channel. People subscribe to the Tidbits channel. We link to it. We put a link on our site. So if we committed to it, you know, we were gonna we were gonna try it out and do it. Um, you know, we did like uh, there was 30 a month. I mean, that's a lot, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, for, but whatever. Yeah. If there was something, I mean, again, this is we have money from the subscriptions. We're thinking about ways that we could use it to increase value to readers and increase uh, subscribers and and uh, pay. So, so here's a question for you, Screenflow folks, because this is something that I've been wanting to do. And Keynote is actually completely broken in this fashion. Um, what I want to do more is a slideshow with audio over it, where 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 basically I can do each slide in and each audio chunk over it separately. <coughs> what do you mean by separately? Separately meaning per slide. So the idea is I can do a slide, I can talk about it, I can stop, I can yep. move on to the next yep. one. You can do that in ScreenFlow. Okay, because that was something that I said in Keynote, you would think you can do that because you can have slides and you can have audio over them and, and all that, but well, Keynote has some glaring bugs that way. ScreenFlow is totally set up for that. What you do is you just take the slide, drag it in, it's a medium, um, um, then you say to ScreenFlow, I want to make a new recording, it's going to be a sound recording, you say whatever it is you want to say, you incorporate that, increase right. the length of the, of the time that it's showing the slide to match mm -hmm. the length of time the audio took, that section of the movie is now done. On to the next part. Yeah, yeah, it's great. You can do that in iMovie too, as a matter of fact. Yeah, but do mm -hmm. you? But it's iMovie, you know, so we don't care. I, I tried doing it in iMovie. Yeah. I don't know why it was why it was hard. Well, I, I have to tell you, if you're going to start using ScreenFlow because I'm making all these movies, I've learned something very valuable. Work slowly, <laughs> take lots of breaths, and when you actually <laughs> make, and when you actually make the movie, then you cut. You cut out all kinds cool. of stuff. Yeah. I mean, I'll, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll like make the movie for an hour, and then when I actually get to the editing stage, there'll be like a minute. You know, I'll cut everything else out. Well, yeah, that's well, how it usually think... goes when you're making video. So, so, that's right. And you, my, point is, make... my, point is, my point is that ScreenFlow makes it really easy to cut stuff, so don't worry. You know, do it again and again. When you, you, know. say, you, when you say cut stuff, though, Matt, are you talking about the video or audio? Yes, both. Yeah, both. Because I mean, both. I mean, it would seem to. Isn't it difficult to get your if you're if you're trying to cut? Isn't it difficult to to basically cut both and still have it sound fluid? Nope. Nope. It's really easy. It's really hmm. easy. Hmm. Uh, uh, Matt, you, Matt, can you make a, uh, a, a ScreenFlow video about using ScreenFlow? That would be very helpful. I think that yeah. I think that would use infinite resources <laughs> on my computer. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, so I just have to note that um, um, we have two viewers. I think the, I think one of them has been Andrew Lawrence the entire time because he's making comments on my Google Plus page. <laughs> some, people work, some people work for public institutions, apparently. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, and he, he 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 was commenting that web dev performance, in other words, iDisk, is way faster in 1074. <laughs> Just oh, in, oh! Just in time for mobile means retirement. So Apple's well, bringing it you back. You should totally write about that. Yeah, yeah, you should write about that. By the yes. way, I totally think this. I, you know, as much as I'm dubious about video and whatever, I think this would be a great thing we could do for our members. Have uh, Tibbet member only chat with the editors thing. Set up this. You know, once a month, do something like this. Let people submit questions and, you know, see if any of our members actually use Google Plus, but they might <laughs> actually join in order to use it. Uh, I don't know if um, I don't think they can be limited in any way. Although you can do it certainly sort of by obscurity. Well, um, exactly. To sort of send out mail. Um, and uh, um, I'm going to probably blow the, the pronunciation. My apologies in advance. But Joe Henri Dominique Rapon um, says hello. Oh well. <laughs> Okay. I guess only I can see, maybe only I can see the comments. I don't oh, quite figured that out yet. I, I don't know where the comments are. Yeah, I don't know where the comments are. Yeah, yeah. They show up if you go to the um, the page for this hangout, but our hangout doesn't show them for some reason because because we're you know, in the hangout. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm it's cool. But anyway, I think we talked about doing something like this for a while. This actually seems incredibly painless if we wanted to do that, and it's a number of benefits. Like, so, hey. so the thing that I'm noticing, um, and uh, for, for future, because this is obviously, uh, for those who have, for, for, our, for our whopping two viewers, um, <laughs> this is only the second time we've done this since we're figuring it out still, but the, um, probably what we would need to do in the future is have people not type uh, during it, because it tends to switch the video to the person oh, who yeah. is typing because of the noise of the keyboard. But if we use speech recognition, then How's that going to work? <laughs> we have to get our text into the computer somehow. <laughs> You're saying we should stop doing other things while we're talking to people? I don't understand how this works. Take a break from Twitter, man. You, you can you can t t turn off the uh, sound on your iPad's virtual keyboard. Has anyone looked? Is Glenn live tweeting this? <laughs> other things. He's he's that. mentioned it a couple of times. <laughs> I, posted, I posted a link. That's why we got our viewers. Got one of no, viewers. actually, the Google Hangout thing. If you look at your little picture, there's a mute button, and I've, I think if you just mute yourself, then it won't pick up the sound from your keyboard. Oh, I can also mute Jeff. I think there you go. That's the only important feature. I think it's only for you that he's muting him, though, Glenn. It <laughs> does, and I got a little thing on my thing that said Glenn Fleischman muted Jeff Carlson. This is, I wish I'd taken a screenshot of it. Burn, Jeff. Oh, wait. You can also block people. Ooh, sorry. I don't want to block me, Matt. <laughs> that, 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 uh, the, the icon next to the, the, mute, the microphone button, that's the block. Okay, that could be bad. Um, so, okay. Well, in any event, yeah. So, I'll, I'll be curious to see what this looks like on YouTube after the fact, and um, <laughs> and uh, we can see. But I do like the I, I do like the um, idea, and I have to say, if nothing else, um, the audio is so much better than Skype has been. Yeah, it, is. Sure it is. really is. I mean, the Skype echo has just been truly harsh the last few times we've done these. I've seen that on yeah. a lot of calls, too. I'm <laughs> <thinking> <laughs> a lot. <laughs> well, I, I'm but sure that when uh, Google buys Microsoft, uh, <laughs> they'll fix Skype. So nothing to worry about. Well, there was based something recently about how, how Microsoft changed the, was it the Skype super hosts or something um, to use Microsoft-controlled machines. And so it's, I don't know, maybe it's conceivable that's related to it. <laughs> How can you mute, whack -a -mole mole here? mute wars? <laughs> mute somebody else. Mute That's whack a mole. <laughs> <laughs> this is really dangerous. <laughs> All right, fellas. Okay, uh, nothing else any for anyone? Um, well, I do have well, a screenshot. I'm, I'm, of the, oh, go ahead. I just say I do have a screenshot of the message saying that Glenn is muted. Uh, Jeff, so <laughs> oh, good. Anybody who wants that, you know, I can. <laughs> or or just mute him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <or> just mute. <laughs> okay, Agatha, really, you have something yourself. else. So I was um, I'm I'm kind of looking into uh, a shortish article about uh, doing uh, metadata for uh, for movies and iTunes because I discovered that you can't add uh, the MPAA rating to uh, to videos in iTunes on your own. You have to use an outside metadata metadata editor <laughs> uh, metadata. Um, metadata. Da, 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 da. So, so I was thinking that you know it's it's not going to be you know a big article, but it might also be a good venue to discuss you know using parental controls on on the Mac and the iPad, which is why I'm 
got interested to do it because I want I want to make sure that when my when my son Sophie and uh, looks at the uh, at, at our uh, uh, iTunes library via the <laughs> iPad. He's not looking at Louis C.K. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, I mean, these, it, the the whole iOS device as an individual, uh, as being for a per person, is interesting because a lot of times it's really true that you know it does they don't share well. But on the other hand, you know, as you say, you're not going, you know, you, do, you are going to share it with your, with your kid because you're not going to get him his own iPad at this point in time. Yeah. And so, you know, for certain things, that's, it's, a, it's definitely going to be shared back and forth. So that, you know, that this, the parental controls at least does seem to be one place where Apple may not have intended it as, as part of a sharing solution, but it does actually give us something in that, in that direction. So I'm, I'm looking into some some possible metadata editors um, and see what what would work and what would be best of the crop. Sounds like a, sounds like a plan. And you're also you've got the keyboard maestro uh, watch list item. I'm working on it. Excellent. Okay. Well, I think we're all set for this week. So uh, see y'all next week. Too Bye. 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 <coughs> Goodbye, watchers. Bye bye, it's the bye bye song. I can't. I